With any project of this scale, there will be challenges. But the rewards will far outweigh those challenges. It's one of the biggest projects we've ever seen on the Midland Main Line. It's called the Aurora Project. We're building 33 five-car bi-mode trains. So that's trains that will work out with both diesel engines and on electric overhead wires. At £400 million, the investment in this project is massive. So this is one of the biggest investment projects this region has seen in decades. You know, it's really exciting because it's the first brand new fleet for 17, 18 years. The combination of the works on the Midland Main Line, the new trains and the depot modification to support it is huge. This upgrade will make our network one of the most modern in Europe. Our passenger um, absolutely love our existing stock, so some of the high-speed trains that have been serviced for 40 plus years, but obviously we need to make sure we're replacing them, we need to be introducing you know, newer, safer trains onto the railway. So when we started this project, it was crucial to us to select the right and outstanding manufacturing partner to work with, and there's a number of things we took into account, both current track record and also a partner who's going to be collaborative and someone we can truly work in partnership with. Hitachi have a great track record in terms of high-speed trains in the UK and working together with Abelia we've delivered a number of projects together so we knew that Hitachi was the right partner to work with. This project means a huge deal to Hitachi and our responsibility is to make sure that we design a train that meets all the requirements of the operator, um, all the laws and standards and regulations and that we meet best practice. Um, we've upscaled our operation um, at our factory in County Durham and we've also recruited a huge number of resources to make sure that we can execute the project to time. Managing a project of this scale is it's a huge logistical undertaking. I mean, this project for Hitachi is huge on a scale perspective. The manufacture of this fleet presents some quite significant design and engineering challenges. The Midland Main Line was built in the 1800s and that presents challenges to us in terms of some of the um, sort of Victorian engineering and architecture that we have to deal with. So we have a lot of um, low road bridges, low tunnels that we have to make sure that our train will fit into. These really are state-of-the-art units with state-of-the-art technology but we must consider that the infrastructure they operate on um, is well over 150 years old. So it needs to be able to operate in the now situation, but also in the future state. We know that on the introduction of these, of these trains, they're going to be what's running through the East Midlands, maybe for 30, 40 years. Um, we want, we really want to get this right for people of the East Midlands. We've produced a lot of rolling stock out of our factory at Newton Acliffe. The assembly and, uh, and the painting, that's common for us at the factory. What's unique about this project is that for the first time we're welding body shells on site. There's new technology and there's new processes that we need to consider. So to make sure that we can do that, we've been using teams from across our global factories uh, in Italy and in Japan to upskill our staff in County Durham. And it all starts with the weld. So this is the East Midlands line uh, where we're producing the East Midlands cars for, for the project. Um, what we've got is the cars start at the top as raw materials as you can see here on the, the trestles. So these materials will be prepped, cleaned and set up ready to be put in the jigs that we've got in front of us. This is the main assembly jig behind us. Uh, in the station we bring the underflame which is the floor the sides, the roof, the rear and the front together and we basically form it into the, into the main car body shell. We've just started the weld on the um, external seam of the car. We do it mechanical process, so it's the exact same gear as we would use if we were doing it manually, but we attach it to a, what's a technically a robot. That keeps it steady, keeps it straight, gives you a, a smooth uh, profile on the weld. If you imagine I was to do it by hand, I'm constantly moving as I'm going which is, is, is giving you a little bit of instability in the weld. That's on a track. So Gary controlling it, Gary's got movement on that, because it's movement by motor, it's smooth motor, it's smooth movement. It's exciting. I'm from a fabrication background, done it for a lot of years. Likewise, there's a lot of us in here. Um, it's nice to work on something of this size. Me and Gary's been on with this cast from the beginning. So we've done all the robotic uh, mechanised welding on the underframe in the jig behind us. We've followed it down to here. So yeah, it'd be nice to see the first one out the door. 
quality and safety are very important to us um, as a business. Um, safety is our number one priority and we must deliver a safe railway for our customers. And the train brings a, a lot of benefits in that respect with some significant enhancements in terms of safety systems and the ability to use some of the latest generations of safety systems. Similarly though on quality, the quality of the product we deliver to our customers is essential. So working with Attachi who have got that good track record of delivering a quality product is, is, is essential and I'm really excited about the step change in quality that these trains are going to bring. So it all comes down to quality, um, you know we're, we're, we're producing high speed trains at the end of the day, it's very important that the end product is at the best quality standards that we can provide. Russ is currently um, doing what we call in process corrections, so he's completed the welding now, he's finished fitting the parts, he's now in processing them. So he's currently using a deburring tool, so he'll use the tool, we've all had in-house training, we know how to work the defects, how to remove them. he spend a lot of time making sure that that weld's absolutely perfect. It, people are getting on the cars at the end of the day, so it's very important that these welds are structurally safe and sound. It's really important for the team working on the project and they're so passionate about this, which is why there's such a huge focus on quality, so they can produce a product that we can all be proud of. So we're currently at the end of the line now, so from the start of the line all the way through, we progress the car, various different welding, mechanised, manual, a lot of structural welds going to the car, a lot of heat, um, and through the nature of welding and the heat process, it, it, the heating and the cooling, the car shape will change over the period of the build. Um, so when it gets to this final stage, we hand it over quality, they'll come on and measure the car, um, from that produce a report, the report will tell us where exactly we need to apply heat to get that shape of the car and the dimensions back to um, the standards and the requirements that we need. So, uh, the guys will come on, they'll heat the car and bring the car back to shape. People always underestimate how complex it is uh, to design and build a train. So if you take paint for example, people assume it's very simple to paint a car when actually it's quite a long process made up of priming, painting and curing to make sure you get the right quality output. So we carefully selected the colour for the new trains and we really wanted a colour that was classy but modern and reflected the railway heritage of the East Midlands region. The aubergine of the purple is the finished colour, that's the customer's finished colour. We use pressure pot to apply the gun, so we have a big pot that's obviously pressurised with air. The whole process takes about six hours to apply the two coats of paint. It's then baked um, and then, say, moved into here ready for final, final finishing. The stairs we're at at the moment is there's some small defects in the paintwork, so we will take a, a small um, sanding block and just rub that very small area. And then, as Ricky's doing now, he'll take a polisher with a cutting compound and then a polisher, and he'll just polish that area so everything blends back in. What do I think to the colour? I think it's one of the hardest colours you can paint. Yes. <laughs> I think it'll definitely stand out, yeah, yeah. So we received this train from paint, exactly the way you say it. Like painted shell, been through weld. The next stage of the process is, this is sound dampening. So this goes on the floor, the sides and the roof. Um, so this will dampen out any like extra noises and make a quieter journey for passengers. Um, so it's, it's critical for a safer, comfortable journey, a quieter journey. So after that is um, the heat insulation. So that goes straight on top of the sound dampening. The same, it goes on the floor, on the sides and on the roof. And that'll add to passengers' comfort, add, add and heat to their journey. So we've got un underfloor and heating on these uh, trains as well. Which actually I've never seen, which is an added, because um, th the trains that I've built previously had a wooden floor. So that all goes in with the keeping passengers warm, keeping them comfortable, which is a good, good, good point to have. EMR has a very significant role for creating a more sustainable future, both providing a means of transport to attract people away from their cars and use the railway network, but also through these new trains that come with some great environmental credentials. So these units are bi-mode, which means that where the lines are electrified, the units will be able to run electric mode. Now the great thing that passengers will really notice is that the conventional engines will turn off and it will become much quieter, so it improves that passenger experience. And of course, it's much more environmentally friendly. 
So I think the combination of being more uh, environmentally friendly and a better product um, should really be quite compelling to attract people to using rail. We've designed it with customers in mind and we've engaged a lot with customers to ensure this is a train that really does meet their needs now and into the future. And we're really optimistic that that's going to keep customers coming back again and again to travel with us on the new trains. It's all about the journey, so if we can make their uh, journey more comfortable, that's paramount. We've worked hard to make sure the trains work for all of our different types of customers, be that a commuter on their regular journey to London, or be it a family or having a day out, or someone who's got some very specific um, accessibility needs. We've tried to make sure the train works for everybody. They've been telling us they want, they want more seats, they want more space, uh, they want the technology, they want the Wi-Fi, the plug sockets, and they want a nice environment in which to travel, you know, the nice temperatures, uh, and even down to the ambience and the sound insulation, for example. These are all things that with a modern new train uh, just provide such a much better environment in which to travel. We know connectivity is crucial for our customers and we also know it's not perfect today so we've done a lot to ensure that you can get your phone signal on the trains and get good Wi-Fi. A really important part of the new train design and I'm really excited that in the new trains we're bringing forward a, a new design of seat for our customers. We've learned a lot from other train builds and our own experience and it's really important that it's a great environment for people to work in and be fully connected. So the combination of seats, tables and phone connectivity is crucial to deliver that. Investing in UK manufacturing means we've got people who, who really understand what our customer needs are in the UK uh, and that is something that's really important to us to have that link and that understanding. So we are design, engineering and manufacturing all the table systems for the Aurora fleet uh, and it's helped secure our position as a world leading SME for rail interiors. This is actually where we take the raw components if you like, the laminates and the, the aluminium skins and the core materials and we bond them into a composite. Now in the final assembly of the Aurora folding tables, um, these feature our new soft close and soft open uh, hinge system which increases passenger satisfaction and importantly safety. The 12 table systems we designed for the Aurora fleet have the highest safety features in the world from crash compliancy and fire compliancy. The benefits for the customer is it allows them to have a good workspace. It's always nice to see our local train fleets with our products on, knowing that we, we made these and it secured localised jobs. So it's always been important to Attache um, that we utilise local suppliers. First of all, from an efficiency perspective, it's so much better if your supply chain is local and they can support anything at a much shorter need. But also, um, we very much promote British built. Snafe on the Aurora fleet are supplying the pipework system. So this is the manipulated stainless steel tube the fittings and associated clamping. And all of this product is being used on the pneumatic and hydraulic system, so compressed air transfer and fluid power transfer. So the investment that we've had through the project from East Midlands Rail, uh, the Aurora fleet, has enabled Stave to also reinvest into the business. So growing the staff, growing the team members, and also investing in new equipment to support. There's a lot that's gone into the new trains. There's the things that customers will see, like seats, doors, tables, etc. But there's a lot that happens behind the scenes. So these trains are going to have a much more enhanced level of connectivity with the outside world. Uh, we've got the next generation of safety systems in there. And we've got a very modern cab environment that we're getting ready for new signalling systems of the future. For the Aurora fleet, we're supplying the AWS and TPWS system. Signals on a railway are a bit like uh, traffic lights uh, on a road um, and they tell the driver that he can pass or he has to stop. There's magnets on the track that are linked to the signals and our system picks up those magnets. If it's a restricted signal, our system will sound a horn and the driver has two seconds to respond to that horn by pressing a button on his, uh, on his driving desk. And uh, if he presses the button, uh, he can, he can, the train keeps going. If he doesn't press the button in time, then our system will apply the emergency brakes. Knowing that our system is keeping people safe on the railway, uh, the drivers, the passengers, uh, it's, it's really good to, to have that sort of uh, that satisfaction when you deliver a, a, good, a good project and a good product, uh, knowing it's keeping people safe. 
absolutely critical for us that we bring our EMR colleagues along with us on this journey. This new fleet is going to mean a lot to our staff. Firstly, it's going to be a new fleet of trains that they can be truly proud of. And also, we've listened to them a lot through the design process so we can do things to make it better for them as well. So the cabs are a really important part of the train and not something that the passengers get to see. Uh, we really think the drivers are going to love these cabs. This car behind me is T1 Car 1 of a brand new train that we, we manufacture here at Newton Aircliff. Um, it's, it's first of its kind going on EMR um, and we currently install the cab hood and the interior panels of it. So we get the cab hood delivered as a separate unit to the car. Um, once we've got the cab hood prepped and everything, we have the feet which we um, adjust to where we see fit. And um, then we offer the cab hood up to the car body and when, when we're happy with the position, we then attach it. We then move on to the interior of the cab. We fit the interior panels. Once we're all happy with that, then the cab desk gets brought in to which then we fix it to the car body. Our drivers are going to drive these trains 9 million miles a year and that's 300 million miles over their life. And that's why it's crucial that we maintain them correctly. We've got to uh, make some, uh, quite a lot of changes to the depot at Etches Park uh, in Derby whilst we're still maintaining a fleet and putting out a service. It's the biggest depot within the East Midlands Railway portfolio. So there's lots of things that we're having to change because these fleet are different and new. We're at Etches Park, this is Shed 4 for Etches Park, we call it the South End Shed. The South End Depot we're going to be doing an underframe carriage wash extraction. Also we're doing a refurb of all the current offices in line with like what we're going to do for the new offices. And then the North Shed, which is where the Aurora trains are going, they're going to have a side extension for heavy maintenance, overhead line, and also there's some track alterations to accommodate 10 car vehicles. Trains are bi-mode, so the capability of electric running as well. So we've got to make sure that we've got um, electric lines, overhead lines, to and that the supply is suitable. We're bringing in some new technology that is about um, helping us maintain those trains and plan the maintenance. And that technology has got to be accommodated on the site. It involves laser beams looking at the wheel profiles and things. So you've got to have an, a safe accommodation of that on the depot. It's a 24-7 operation as it is. So there's no downtime on a depot. It's not closed and we can't take it out of service to be able to do all of this work. And we've got to do it all in, in a given time frame because the trains are coming and we've got to be ready. I'm born, I grew up in the East Midlands. This is my, this is my railway and this is, um, for everybody I think who works at TMR, this is our legacy. This is what we will leave behind us. Oh yeah, well it's a sort of signature of pride if you like, you know, like you've had something to do on it and you've been part of the build and it's something like to take a bit of pride in. It's a great feeling to be involved with it. Um, it'd be nice to see these, these trains running on the tracks and when you see that, or you're, you're actually getting one, you go, oh wow, I had something to do with building that. So yeah, nice feeling. I like to follow the journey. I don't just like, and I like to point out to my friends and family, I helped build that and that was built at Hitachi. And I want the satisfaction of it and I hope the customers get the satisfaction out of it as well. So it'll be a really proud day for everybody involved to see the amalgamation of years of work um, turn into a completed train and watch that go on its first journey. My parents will be travelling on this service, my family will be travelling on this service. So it does absolutely bring that extra dimension to, you know, I want to be proud of this, I want to do something really special. This is something I know that I'll be able to travel on in the future and feel really proud when you know, friends and family are asking about, um, uh, about what it's like to travel with East Midlands Railway and thinking, we've done that, we've delivered that. These new trains mean a lot to me personally. I'm local and I really want to leave a positive legacy for the customers and the communities of the East Midlands and these trains are truly going to do that.